This broadcast is the property of Codependence Anonymous. Reproduction without written permission from Codependence Anonymous is not permitted. All right. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm the uh, moderator for that uh, 12 step. And it looks like the other uh, uh, other person didn't make it in, as I'm understanding. And so we're, we're going to just flow right along. Uh, we're, and you're just in time. We just ran through everybody sharing where they were the steps. And I'm sure this room's no different. There's just everybody's every which way and starting out and very senior, very experienced. And, you know, we got everybody in the room we need. So here we go. So moving right along here, step one is where we just got to. So y'all are just in time. And uh, the step one for me took me forever to understand because it's like, I, wh- wh- what do you mean I can't help other people? Come on. I, what do you mean I can't fix that? Come on. What do you mean I can't do that? I Come on. It took me a long time to begin to understand that I was powerless, not over what I did. No, no, no. I was powerless over the outcome. I was powerless over getting it to work the way I wanted it to work. That's what I was powerless over. And until I began to understand that the only way for that to happen was to have a higher power that I partnered with, I remained powerless. And all my struggling and all all my anger and my frustration and my depression, and and I had tons of it, it, it didn't make any difference. I could just, I could be just like a little spoiled child. I could just yell and scream as long as I wanted. It didn't make any difference because I was powerless. That's all there was to it. Okay, so finally, as I worked the steps, the steps began. I noticed the steps were working me. It wasn't me working the steps. It was having an effect. It was showing up at meetings and, and hearing the steps. And I didn't actually start working the steps for many years in CODA. I'm a slow learner, trust me. And so, uh, but I did, I I am self-observant. And I did notice I was changing. And it's like about a year and a half in Dakota, it began to dawn on me that maybe what was happening was CODA. Maybe the changes I was experiencing, which was different from therapy. Let's turn the second one. Hello. Okay. It's different from therapy. The sooner I got it, and the one message I would like everybody to walk away with today, we are not, a, I, I, I was not in a psychological program. Y'all can be whatever program you want to be in. I was not in a psychological program. What was happening to me was not like what I experienced with all the excellent therapy I had. And I had some good, good people out in California, which is where I grew up in therapy, Southern California. So, so once I began to pay attention to this process and I, was, I started paying attention to the steps, I thought, hmm, that's very interesting. And then I began to realize that step one was a foundation. Now, 12, step 12, we're going to get to, and we're going to touch on three, I mean, two through 11. But that's, you know, it's one and 12 is, is what's going to really key us off here. So. One is to surrender and realize, no, it doesn't matter how I may think this or I may think that or I may think the other. It doesn't matter. I can think it all day long. It is not going to make life different. I have a higher power. I didn't know that. That step one is to to realize that I'm powerless over others. Well, y'all can realize that if you want because it's absolutely darn true. But what I came to understand for myself was that I was powerless over just about everything I ran into. Not over what I did. No, no, no. I could do all day long. The outcome. And it was everything I did was to achieve an outcome. Let me see how we're doing here. Okay. Not so good. Okay, so it, so... Everything I did was to achieve an outcome, and I couldn't. All right. So I start working the steps seriously now. Now I'm getting serious. And I'm like you know, a couple other folks in this room. I've been through these steps uh, more than once. <laughs> more than once. And, and every time I go through them, I just get in different places. 
I don't go one through 12. Okay? I may go one to seven. All right, no, seven's my favorite. Man, seven's my favorite. Yeah, uh, made it, made it, made it, made a decision to turn my life, my will over the care of God. And, and, and it's like, that's my favorite. Okay. So getting, getting back to where I was. So I, I don't just go one through 12. I go one, a three, four, four again, five, five is kind of hard. I, you know, five is, five is probably the most important step for me because that's a step that I face my shame. I mean, I can face it a little bit in four, but that's privately between me and God. But when I got to go to another hurt person, another human being, and tell them that, you know, let's say that I, oh, I was a CODA's treasurer and stole money from you guys, in case you didn't know that, uh, and I did. And I was, um, let's say, I, I slept with a lady with her son in the room next door. I know we, that that poor young boy could hear everything that was going on. So ashamed of that. I, and, you know, and she was drunk. She didn't even know what she was doing. So I've done things that I'm ashamed of. And it's like, but being able to step five, telling these things to another human being is probably the, the hardest step for me, but, the, but maybe in some ways the most important. So, anyhow, so, okay, so step one, we're done with now. How's that? How's that for step one? <laughs> moving along, moving right along. Let's go on here to step two. Okay, came to believe the power greater than ourselves. I don't know if I came to believe that. You know what kicking and screaming is? Well, that's the way I came to step two. It's like, come on. Okay, it says it. I read it. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, right, right, higher power. Okay, now can we get on with this thing? But it's true. I now do believe that there's a power greater than myself that can restore me to sanity. And I can tell you right now, for me, it, until I came to believe that, I couldn't get it. I couldn't understand what was transforming me. Something was changing me. And it wasn't changing me the way my therapist changed me by giving me insight, understanding, da 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 No. It was transforming me. Something was transforming me. And it liked it. I liked it a lot. And all I was doing was going to meetings and looking at these steps. But my higher power loved me and was taking care of me and was transforming me. <laughs> Whether I liked it or not, but I did like it. <laughs> but so, so came to believe the power of great myself. Yes, I did come to believe that, but I think I've been through the steps, um, I don't know, five, six, seven times before I came to believe that. I don't even remember what point I came to believe that. It just happened to me, like the rest of the steps. I didn't do the steps, the steps have been doing me. And I, I, you know, and I, I encourage you to, <laughs> to have a similar experience. Let's get let's just move right along because let me see where we are here. Time. Oh, okay. Oh gosh, that looks terrible. Well, we're gonna move quickly, guys. Let's go on to step two. While we're having I wanted more participation, but to be honest with you, this is gonna turn into a lecture. And I'm just gonna share with you my experience, strength, and hope as I got through this thing, because uh step three. Made a decision to turn our will and lives over the care of God as we understood God. Hello. <laughs> no, I didn't make that decision. I read the words, but no, I didn't make that decision. But fortunately for me, my higher power didn't wait. My higher power just moved right along. Uh, and it's like, just because of my intent, because I had come to understand that everything else had failed. Everything else had failed. Excellent group therapy, excellent groups. All, I mean, Southern California, for Pete's sakes, you could get it all there. It was like a smorgasbord. And I, I participated. So I, I had my fill. So having said that, so it's like, I did not make that decision. But fortunately for me, I have a higher power that loves me and knew what I wanted. And all I had to do was just try. 
And that's what I had been doing. And when I got to about 39 years old, I'm 74 now, by the way, when I got to about 39 years old and I began to realize that I was powerless over fixing myself and I was going to code meetings and I was, I was looking at these steps and my a higher power began to transform me, which I think anybody who studies these steps is going to have the same experience. Let me just move right along because God don't play no favorites. Okay, let's move right along to step three here. We'll see how we're doing. All right. So the only requirement for membership in CODA is a desire is, is to sign up and, and get your name uh, uh, for uh, and get two other witnesses that you've signed up and they'll let you in the door. No, that's not the only requirement. It's a desire for healthy and loving relationships. Okay. That's a very interesting and tricky statement for me. You see, healthy, loving, and loving relationships. And first of all, if you'd asked me, I would have told you I'd had them. <laughs> Silly me. So, but healthy, loving relationships. See, you have to have the desire. Okay, let's just put it that way. Well, before, before having, before the transformation, and, and God, you know, being so kind to me and forgiving me for all my ignorance because uh, I, I couldn't have told you what that was. I could have told you what I thought it was, but until, until I was willing to let go and let God and let my higher power take over, which is what the 12 steps do. So if you don't want to do that, get out of the meeting now. Don't go any further because if you keep going on this thing, then the time is coming when you're going to notice that your higher power has got control. And all the while you thought it was you. Well, that's okay. That's just me. I don't know you. I don't know who, you know, that's just one of my experience, but that's my recommendation. If you don't want, if I didn't want my higher power to take over, I had to walk away. But fortunately, I, I didn't know that. And I was ignorant. And so I, out of my ignorance, I just kept going. And so, and, but also I did notice that I was changing. And the changes that were happening to me were exactly what I had always wanted. And I didn't even know what they were. It's like until I, until my higher power transformed that little area of my heart, transferred that little area of my soul, transferred that little area of my, I didn't even know it was there. I didn't even know it was possible. I, and, you know, I mean, could you tell somebody, I mean, how do you tell somebody what, you know, what the morning looks like who's, who's never been awake when the sun rises. How, how do you describe that to somebody, okay? So it's like that with the, the, with the 12 steps. It's a process of awakening. And what's the 12th step? Having had a spiritual awakening. How do you get there? You take step one. It's just that simple. As soon as I had step one and I was beginning to let go and realize that I was powerless, Step two happened to me. Then step three happened to me, which was the only requirement for membership was a desire for helping them. Of course, everybody says they got that. So I'm happy you have that. That's a good thing. Let me go right on here, get to this ugly step four. Where is it in here? Okay, come on, get off these control patterns. I know you got all this note stuff. I know you know. Oh my God. Step four, boy, they're serious about that, aren't they? Okay. I can find it here. Step four. Oh my gosh. This workbook is crazy. Step four. Okay, step four. So, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just came up with a couple of things I thought, but over the years, you see, my higher power made a searching and fearless moral inventory of me. Or should I put it differently? My higher power revealed to me what those moral, moral is just to me, for me, it's just me now, okay? It's just shame. It's just, what am I ashamed of? Because for me, it turns out that morality has nothing to do with anybody's religion. It's a, it's a relationship between me and my higher power. And when I do something I'm ashamed of, 
I instantly feel shame and then I instantly defend against it. And my whole life, everything I did that I was ashamed of, I was busy defending against it, busy being aware of it, busy not, you know, denying it. Just, you know, it's just like it consumed me. So having said that, when I'm getting now to step four, I'm starting to write this down. That was beginning to get interesting because I realized I was doing things that I was ashamed of and I hadn't really paid attention to it. So I moved right along because we don't have much time here. And look how we're, how we're doing 28 minutes or halfway through. And we're only on step four. Oh my God. All right. So we're, and this book is four, step four, step four, five. Where are you? Quit hiding from me. Or James, you're muted, mate. Thank you, buddy. So let me just let me just share with you step five for me. I never had a sponsor. My my meetings were my sponsors. When I had when I discovered another moral inventory, the very next meeting I went into, I shared it. And I'll tell you, there was times I was really ashamed. But I knew with this program, at this point, this program was doing something to me and I wanted it. I wanted what my higher power was doing. And so I went into all my meetings for my step five. All, and it's like, and it was a very next, and at that time I was going to lots of meetings. <laughs> like Southern California beats down. We had lots of meetings. <laughs> if, you, if you were awake, there was a meeting somewhere. So anyhow, so I would just go into the very next meeting and I just tell the people, you know what? This is what I did. And it's like, that's how I did my step five. And it worked for me. It's like, it just, once I had told all those people that meeting, that shameful thing I did, the shame was lessened. It wasn't gone. It wasn't gone. That took a lot more work on my higher powers part. I wasn't that easy, but it did lessen it. And if I needed to, I would go into more than one meeting and admit it. Because every time I did, it would lessen it a little bit more. So as for step five, that was what was critical to me because it got me ready for step six, which was being entirely ready. Became entirely ready. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character because of step five. I mean, once I had got from one to five, yeah, you know what? I was ready. I did want in step six. I was entirely ready. I don't know entirely. Maybe that's kind of a strong word. But no, no, it's right. My higher power had prepared me to humbly ask God to remove all my shortcomings. And it's like it actually worked. And I and I did that. And not I, I'm not an on your knees kind of person. Sometimes when I'm in a lot of pain, I would this has been many years. But sometimes many years ago when I was in a lot of pain, I'd be down on my knees. But basically, I'm not. I'm kind of arrogant and ignorant. I go around thinking, you know, never mind what I think. But I go around thinking. <laughs> and so so I didn't, you know, but I did humbly know in my heart all the time. I came to a place where I lived humbly asking God to remove my shirt. Oops, let me get over step six. Oh, there I am. Here I am. Oh, I'm entirely ready. I'm, I know I'm ready. I know I'm ready. Let me get all over here. Step seven. You know, where are you? Hold on. I'm working on it. I'm getting there. Where are you? Ah. Oh, I don't want to do this one. Step seven. Humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. What else would I do? What else is important? I mean, do I want the shortcomings removed? Yeah. Did I do everything from the time that I was basically 19 to 20, somewhere in that area, when I got started to, to remove those shortcomings? Didn't know what I was removing. Thought I was fixing my personality. But no, I wasn't. I was trying to remove my shortcomings. 
And I tried until I was almost 40 years old. And that's when I got to the place. I said, you know what? This was not working. And God said, okay, Jim, now you're ready for a 12-step meeting. And there was one opened up just down the street from me. And I walked right down. <laughs> I got a great higher power. What? And I walked right down the road. And there I was. And I started my meetings. And sure enough, these promises happened. And I didn't even have to know what they were. I didn't have to know what I needed. I didn't have to know what was wrong with me. I didn't need any of that stuff. God delivered it to me. God had me do my fourth step for years. Another, for years, another, you know, character defect with service. I'm going, one more? Every, but each time they did see, at this point, it's okay. It's all right. Because I have the 12 steps. And I know what to do. And it works every time. There is no exception. Not because of me. Not even because of the steps. Because the steps are the way that, let's see, how shall I put this? If anybody's read any of this stuff and follows the history of this, I'll give you a quick history thing. See, there's their Oxford group. And the Oxford group came out of England. And the England is the one, and they're the ones who actually develop the steps. And then Bill W. came along, and Bill W. had a spiritual awakening. And having had a spiritual awakening, he looked at the Oxford group. I think he might have actually been studying with them at the time. He looked at them, and he, he, he I think they had six steps, something like that. And his spiritual awakening, he expanded them to 12. So, but the, but the bottom line, the reason I'm sharing that with you is the, the, the 12 steps are not somebody's idea. They are, they are the product of a spiritual awakening. They are the result and they date all the way back to Christ. They go back to the Oxford group studying Christ, studying what he was teaching, how he was teaching it and telling us what to do in order to have spiritual awakenings according to Christ. So that's what came from there over in England, over to here in America. And so, and, and so, you know, having had that spiritual waking, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry, I do that. Okay. So we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. And that's the bottom line. If anybody can get there, you can put the book down and walk out the door. You're not going to want to, but you could. And it's like, because that's all. I had to get to was to humbly ask God to remove my shortcoming. And God said, you betcha. I just been waiting for you to ask, Thought you never would. And so, but I did. And he did. And, and they're not all gone. We're working on it. We're working on it. But it, he's, he's removing them as I become entirely ready. And so he doesn't remove one before I'm entirely ready. And I become entirely ready because I live the steps. I understand that I'm powerless. I know there's a power greater than myself. And I'm willing to turn my life and my will over that, to that higher power. And every time God presents another moral defect to me, I'm more than happy to go into a meeting and tell somebody or, or some, one of my buddies who's also in 12 steps. You know, any, anybody I can grab. They all, uh, 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 okay. And then I, at that point, I become entirely ready and I humbly ask God to remove my shortcomings. And, and it works every time. There's no exception. So having done that, there's a little bit of cleanup work has to come after that. Now yeah, we're doing time. I can tell over here. I can read this silly clock. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Oh, we're good. We're good. So. Having done that, there's some cleanup work. Yeah, I had, I had, you know, there's like, let me get, oh, let me just, no, let me guess at it. I got it right here with me. At least I can do is get it right. Seven. Ah, step eight. Made a list of all persons being harmed and became willing to make, uh, make amends to them all. I just want to share with y'all, okay? This whole 12 step thing is personal. This is how. This, if you want to do it by the book, and many people love to do it by the book. I'm not a by the book person. Just never worked for me. Don't know why. But asking why a long, long time ago. But, but having, so I never really made a list. I mean, one of the reasons I never had to make a list, because as soon 
as I became aware of a person I'd harm, I reached out to them. So I didn't need a list because that's like, there it is. I'm a harm that person, reach out. Now, most people, I have to be honest with you, most people I have not been able to find if they, if God re enters them into my life, I will immediately make amends to them. It's like, because I, not, you know, I mean, what else, what am I going to do? I, I want to make amends to them. I was wrong. And I want to let them know I wronged you. And I'm so sorry that I did it. So, yeah, I'll make amends as quick as I can. But the point I'm making is that, that the list never happened with me. Because all I did was, as fast as I, 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 another person appeared in my consciousness, that this was somebody I'd harmed, I, I immediately just, I just made a man. That's all. Okay. There we go. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm moving right along here. Moving right along. All right. Still working on cleanup work here. Um, just checking the time. I guess, I guess we're looking like we're doing real good. Okay. Made direct demands. I heard it. Oh. What James, was, just oh, so I, that you know, somebody will, will give you a five minutes heads up. Okay. Would that help? Yes. Sure, Carol. That'd be great. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Carol. I really appreciate that. Okay. So, uh, made direct demands. That's step nine. Impossible. Didn't need to make the list because. All right. Well, let's get all over here. Ten. Ten's a good one. I like ten. I like ten. Give me step ten. Continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. See, recovery is very important. I can't, I, I don't do the recovery. The recovery is done to me. Hello. And my higher, my higher oh. power. What, somebody want to say something? I'm sorry, this is Karen. Am I in the wrong room? I don't know, Karen. I'm supposed to Sorry, there's Come only on, Karen. Bring it on, Karen. Let's hear you. Hi. So, okay, uh, events will take care of Karen. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Jim, come on, continue. Okay, are we okay? Hope so. Okay, continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. You better believe it, because when I, well, I have the good fortune now after recovery, it's a really, it's really great. As, as, as my higher power transforms me and cleans me out, then I become very sensitive to when I'm wrong. And I mean, I know it immediately. I know that feeling of shame. I have felt it. I've explored it. I know all about it. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. And so, so I, it doesn't, it's like when I do something wrong to another person, which I don't, I, of course, I don't do it deliberately. That's just not my nature. But I'll do it inadvertently. And I'll immediately feel that sense of shame. And as soon as I do, everything goes on alert. And it's like I start looking around because I know I've, I've, I've made a mistake. And so for me, I live by state, step 10. I mean, continue to taste personal inventory. That's what that means to me. There, the personal inventory is taken for me. It's done to me. It's like I instantly feel that moment of shame and I understand I have messed up and it's like I'll turn oftentimes I don't get anywhere I'm on the phone with somebody or I'm on a video like we are now oh, excuse me or I'm in a store or I'm wherever I am and I know right away and I just I turn right now hey I look look buddy I'm sorry I, I was just you know it's my defect I screwed up and I just deeply apologize for, for, you know, for having, well, basically I mistreat the person. It may not look like it to them, it may not look like it to anybody else, but I know I did mistreat the person. And it's like, and, and, and I, that is interesting. You know, I want to share with you a thought just went through my mind. It just occurred to me, often, t- I, you know what? I, you know, I just realized a lot of times people don't know they've been mistreated. They don't realize it. They're just going along. And of course, I, I, I've been there. I understand that. They're living in this 
this world of self, you know, of self you know, thought and over and over, and they're obsessed with this and they're obsessed with that, and they, and they don't realize that I've just added pain to their life because they've already gotten there, they're going around with so much pain and they have. But you know, that's just one of the things. So it's real important for me that I that I that I um, continue to take personal inventory and when I'm wrong, promptly. Wrong. If I have to, if I have to stop the car, turn back around, and go back to the store because for some reason it didn't dawn on me before I got out the front door, I will do that. I will do whatever it takes to promptly make amends because I because first because because no. No, not for any other reason than it's just wrong to to harm another human being. It's just wrong to hurt another person. And it's just like the faster I can clean that my wrong up, the better. And that's what the step and my higher power have done for me. Because my higher power incessantly works at keeping me cleaned up. And that, that just means so let's go on here and see. I think there might be a step 11 because that has to be between her and 12, right? I mean, the way I count, I'm just thinking to myself. Hey, Jim, yes. you want me to give you a break? What? I got a poem I can read about step 11. Oh, that'll be interesting. Let me read step 11 first. Okay. All right. Okay. So through prayer and meditation. To improve our conscious contact with God as we understood God. Praying only for knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. Okay, Mr. James, go for it. Okay, I, I, I might have messed up, but it, this was, I wrote it at the end of my talk about step 11, but it's about finding the threads of my recovery. So it might pertain more to step 12, but let's read it. Along my journey, I've picked up threads of truth and I've begun to weave them into my garment of recovery, like a winter coat or a vest that protects me from the elements. But in this case, the elements were fear, shame, guilt, and rage, feeling less than or more than. I keep the wind at my back and my collar turned up. I know when I stop, they will surround me and I pull my coat around myself. The truth will set me free I have found this in so many ways. The truth I seek, the threads I find, this coat I have made are all becoming part of me, part of who I am. I remember when I started how good it felt to finally be free. I lost weight, I went to the gym, I regained my eyesight, I got my own car, I leased my own apartment. I bought a bike and I remember not wanting to put the brakes on when I went down the hill because the feeling of speed and freedom were so overwhelming. I'm finding that my recovery is also a living thing. The people I needed always materialized and supplied exactly what I needed. I've been given so much, but now I am the one showing up and they look at me and I can feel their need. You see, I'm wearing this coat made up of all the threads I picked up along the way. They can see the coat. They pull one of the threads but my life doesn't become unraveled, but it keeps getting stronger. But I cannot rest because there is always the next destination. And I realized why I didn't want to put the brakes on as my fear gives way to hope and my ambivalence turns to love. It took me 30 months from the death of my daughter to the day on the beach where my whole life changed in an instant. That was the day I turned my will and my life over to the care of my higher power. I am learning throughout my recovery journey that it is not what I aspire to or plan or even want, but what I allow that changes me. I pray for my higher powers will for me and then I listen and I plan to recognize it and allow it into my life. I am finding that each day can be different, new, exciting and balanced. Thank you for letting me read. Great, James, thank you very much. That was lovely. You know, what uh, hit me right away, James, was the one that, because folks wonder how long it takes to recovery. But as you mentioned, it's instantaneous. It's just like, it's just like the snap, you know, it's just instant. When it happens, it just happens. 
and there's you know and it's like it's like there never was all those years and never was all that time never was all that struggle it just happens and so it's very quick so when you ask somebody how long it takes to recover really it's it's how how what's the right word for that james instantaneous it takes what, what it takes and when <laughs> no, you get no, there no. And, and when you get there you'll know you're there well that's that's true right. that's true no that's right no it takes what it takes okay uh, so talk to talk to prayer and meditation let me see where we are here i know we're doing good but still well oh yeah i got about two minutes left that's what on my little clock and poo here so okay so to prayer and meditation well folks everybody in this room does prayer and meditation i already know that and you never would have got here if you weren't doing some kind of prayer and some kind of meditation and i don't really care what you call it i'm sure nobody else does either now conscious contact with god that's a little trickier. And the only way I was able to have the little bit I've got is I let go in step one. Step 12 is dependent upon step one. If I don't let go and realize I'm powerless, I'm never going to spiritually awaken. It just isn't going to happen. And because I've got too tight a grip on what I think is right and wrong, and I'm not listening to my higher power, and in my case, my higher power, some folks, God speaks to them. God doesn't speak to me. God just changes me. <laughs> it's like, I just come out the other side different. I mean, what happened? So it's just like that for me. So that's the way it is for me with step 11, and then here we go. Rolling right along to step 12. Uh, oops. Oh, that's the tradition. Yeah, traditions are great, but I'm looking for steps. Ah, step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to other codependents and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Okay, so in case anybody wonders, it's not like try to carry the message, okay? Because once we begin to spiritually awaken, we carry the message. And, 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 and if you've ever seen those Jesus freaks out there, I think you can understand what I'm talking about. They carry the message. So, but it's like we don't try to carry the message. But we can't. But just try not to carry it. And I don't mean you get out and, you know, proselytize and do all that stuff. The message gets carried in our very being. It becomes who we are. And it's like once it becomes who we are, every move we make carries a message. Every word we say carries a message. It's the way we say. It's the way we move. It's the, no, it's the expression of who we are now. And that's the transformation that the, the spiritual awakening is all about. It's like once we've worked the steps and once we've got to where we've, we've experienced not all at once. It took me forever. Little bitty spiritual awakenings. The spiritual awakenings are instant. <laughs> you had to put them all together before I was smart enough to know that something was happening. So it's just like, it's a, it's a process. So having had a spiritual awakening, folks, you've already had it. You wouldn't have got this far. You wouldn't be in this room if you hadn't had a spiritual awakening. It took me a long time to, to notice it and become aware of it. Once I noticed it and I became aware of it, I could start looking for it. That helped a lot. My higher power was very grateful that I finally started noticing and I started looking for it and working towards it. So there's no one in this room who hasn't had a spiritual awakening. Some may know it, some may not. But the main point I would have to say about that is that if keep seeking it because that's how my i was able to help my higher power get me there okay that's all i have to say about it now i'll take questions okay just be like that you know there's a final exam right Everybody thank knows you that. for sharing james james how would you like to handle taking the questions you want people to raise their hands 
Or you want, you want um, to open it up for sharing about their experience on the steps or something like that, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm good with that, Florence. Let's go with the uh, open it up. And, okay. and if we start to talk over each other, I'll try to ask somebody to hold back a little bit. Uh, we could uh, take you yeah. raise hands and you could call on them if you want. There's a problem with that. Okay. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. Um, that's not going to work. There's too many pages. There's, there's no way to know where everybody is. Uh, I mean, that's not so going to The work. raise hands puts them to the top of the management participants list. I can tell you when someone raises their hand. Oh, that would be super. Okay, let's try okay. with the teamwork on that. So if anyone okay, would but, like to share, please put up a raised hand. Right. That's a virtual raised hand. Um, how do you do it? You hover over your name, right? And it should come up under more to raise your hand. No, just down yeah. at the bottom. Of the either left either reactions or more. Okay. Reactions. We got Maggie B first. Hello, Go for it, Maggie. Hey, James B. Um, like I said, this is my first time ever doing anything with CODA. Um, and thank you. I had a two part actually. One is what advice would you give someone that's just now starting out with these meetings? And two, what has been the hardest part for you going through these steps? Okay, number one, somebody just starting out, keep coming back. That's an easy one. You just keep coming back. Number two, the hardest part for me is realize this is not a psychological program. This is a spiritual program. And to make that transition from, because this head here has been educated with psychology. And so to make that transition to, oh, there's some, this is not psychological. There's something else happening here. That was the hardest part for me. Once I understood this was a spiritual program, things started to fall together really fast. Thank Otherwise, you. Keep coming back. Thanks, James. Okay, we have Gillian A is next on the raised hands. Go for it, Gillian. Hey, my name is Gillian. Okay, Gillian. Thank, thank you very much, Gillian. James. That was Welcome a brilliant chair and really grateful. Um, I've been in CODA, you know, many years, but um, I agree. Uh, the most important thing for me has been the word admitted, admitted with Carlos over our and that our lives have become unmanageable. And the biggest change for me was when I actually began to uh, understand that my higher power, I had to be hand in hand with my higher power. And it was, it was a loving, became a loving, kind, generous, uh, unjudgmental higher power. That uh, Because I had problems with the, the word God when I first came in. I was always a spiritual person, but the word God always seemed to jar because I always had this, uh, um, you know, dictatorial higher power. But the biggest thing, as you were saying, is if, if, if I didn't get that, that was the biggest stumbling block for me. And I was very fortunate. I was in another fellowship, being codependent, helping somebody else. And the person there uh, was an agnostic. Mm -hmm. And they read out of the AA big book, although it wasn't AA. They didn't have their own literature at the time. And I was so grateful because this person, you know, explained, you know, if there was something turning this world and it isn't her, you know, and that really meant something to me. I thought, yeah, I can understand that. If there's something in this universe turning the world, it isn't me. It's bigger than me. And that began my spiritual journey. But today. Right, okay, Jillian, when you were short on time, I appreciate what you're sharing. Uh, get, to, get to the end. You're doing great. Go ahead. Finish up. Yeah. And, and then I really like the way you were putting together step one and step 12, because that's absolutely the, the crux of the thing. Because when I first came in, I did one, two and three and then 10, 11 and 12. But to join in step one and 12, I really appreciate that because that's what we have, a spiritual awakening once we connect with a higher power. And then I'm very willful. So step three is, you know, made a decision to turn my will and my life. And I'm very willful, you know, and I like the way you explained things about it not being too serious, just getting it done and making that connection with your higher power, which to me has been the most gratifying thing. And today I'm happy in my own skin, thanks to CODA and the program, The 12 Steps. Thank you very much, Jim. Great, Jillian. Thank you so much. Uh, I have James so. K next. Yes. Uh, my, my, the hardest part of my journey was getting, uh, my church hardwired me 
about religion and I couldn't I couldn't get over this concept of God. And then when I remember sharing in a meeting that I the, the hardest thing I had to do was get it from my head to my heart. And once I got it in my heart, then the game was over. I that that's your emotion. And that's where you find your higher powers will for you in your heart. And I didn't find it at the church. I, I was raised up in the church and it was vengeful and it was hateful and it was, it was scary. And once I got, I made that, this, that and once I figured out that it was all in my head and to listen to my heart, that's when I really got, that, that's when my journey really took hold and, uh, and I, and it was successful. And I just want to thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Susan M. Hi, thanks for listening. Um, thanks, and thanks for speaking. <laughs> um, just trying to accept God into my life. I find, how do you accept that God into your life and relax to God when you feel like there's someone who's trying to intercept and be your God? That's a confusing question to me, Susan. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. I've never felt that way. Hmm. Can you can you give me uh, another hint as to what you're trying to tell us? Um, if if someone else is, if you feel controlled, how do you release to God? If you feel controlled by somebody, something, somebody or something that doesn't have your best okay. interest. All right, all right, all right. The issue, okay. I'll, I'll, the way you do it is you work the steps. Thank you. Okay. We have Sharon Al next. We have five minutes left. My name is Sharon. I'm a codependent. Hey, Miss Sharon. Uh, really grateful for this talk, even though I had signed up for the other one. Um, it was just a nice journey through the steps, and uh, I I figured I'll I'll go to the other one because I I know all I need to know about the steps. But you enlightened me a lot, and uh, I'm grateful for that. Thanks. Thank you, Miss Sharon. That's very kind. The Mr. Deep. Hi, this is Anne, dependent. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, for I um, felt the same way. I did the 12 steps in another fellowship and that has helped me in this fellowship. So um, just by attending meetings so far, I haven't started the steps in this program. I've, sorry, I've been noticing um, changes in my life and you know things are improving. And yes, it's true. Once you've surrendered to God, things start changing in your life. I find um, without you having to do too much work anyways, like I do the prayer meditation and, you know, I've changed my lifestyle according to the 12 steps. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Sorry, James, I think I muted you. Mm -hmm. you. Uh, Julie B is next. Julie B, are you there? Yes, hi. Um, this is Julie B, recovering codependent. So grateful for this blessing. And I just want to just say thank you for your interpretation of the steps. Um, and I attended another workshop, um, CODA workshop on Zoom about three weeks ago, and it was on step three. And I um, shared an affirmation because um, I'm a relationship addict. And what I do is I depend on being in relationships to validate my worth. So step three for me is I am enough, bottom line. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. I really enjoyed your workshop. And thank you for everybody being here. Thank you for your kindness. I have uh, Justin H. Hi there. Uh, thank you, James, for your talk. Um, yeah, a part that really stood out for me was powerless over outcomes. And the reason that's really important for me is 
even with a faith in a higher power and a knowing that it exists, something I've not doubted for a long time, I can still keep it out of my life. And, you know, so that's an important thing for me to come back to is that, you know, someone once told me in another fellowship, the only character challenge that they had was that they wanted to be God. And that is what I relate to. It's kind of the thread through so much is the desire to control. And so to come back to being powerless over outcomes is just like a little mantra that I'll take away from your talk. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we have uh, Justin H. Was that just Justin H? Yes, it was. Okay, uh, Jeremy M. I hey, really appreciate you doing this, Florence. Sure. Hi, James. Uh, thank you for your exper experience, strength, and hope. And I'm Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. a codependent. And I just wanted to say that um, I enjoyed the simplicity of your step four, just saying that uh, what am I shameful of? So I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jeremy. Thanks. We have one more, Ron Robertson, and, and we have one minute left. So I think we're, we're good. Ron, <laughs> I'm sorry. I said your last name. Hi. Oh, that's fine. I, I don't, that's not a problem for me. Um, hey, yeah, Mr. the Ron. understanding of the world is very frightening. I am wrong. I am so dependent. Uh, I have worked the steps to another program, and I've done some step studies here mostly. We're in Indianapolis. Um, that's frightening. My main experience of being controlled was being in a, what some people would label as a cult. I would not mention the name of it, obviously. Uh, because there's still people that I love that are in it, but um, there is a lot of pressure on us to, uh, from outside, I think, from, you know, you could say from politics, religion, individual people, uh, you know, to, to control, you know, and to think that we all might have a tendency to think we have the right answer. So I do agree about that. I probably am less uh, worried about you know, uh, it's more comfortable in my skin than I've ever been. And I look forward to getting farther and more from the steps of this program. I'm very grateful for the other one that I was in. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Ron. Oh, wait. Uh, so I was thinking 12.30 was the end time. And actually, it's 12.45, correct? Yes. I don't know. Carol? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So you still have 15 minutes. Yes, the agenda is uh, So we have more time for sharing. Okay. So Cecilia is next there. James, I have a question for you. Um, given that we're all on Zoom and I'm fairly new, I've been on CODA for three months. Uh, I'm just getting started on my step four and I need to find somebody for my step five, but everybody is on Zoom right now. So it's really hard being new to the program and not knowing anybody face to face. How do you approach somebody and ask them like, hey, can you, can you be my person for step five when you don't get a chance to like hang out or see them before or after a meeting? Well, I, I, I'm not a good person to answer that question, Leia, but I would share with you that that sounds like something I'd ask my higher power. Um, I, I just say, you know, just approach a person the same way that you would, um, that you would if you were at a, at a meeting face to face, you just chat them or ask if you could speak with the person after the meeting. Um, there's also chat meetings that you can go to with, with, uh, um, message boards and things like that, that you could try to find some, a support person there. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways. I think if you probably put down in the chat, some people might even talk to you here. I don't know. Yep. Thank you so much. But I was gonna suggest the chat. Uh, Karen Kay. Hi, I'm Karen Kay from Syracuse, New York, um, a codependent, and my credits don't transfer. Um, I just got the last part of the speaker, and I just want to echo uh, to the last question. Um, I sponsor through around the world and I have my own Zoom account. So when I work the steps with people, we are privately working together one-to-one -one from step one until step 12. 
and it seems to work well. Um, I had to build a relationship with that person so they feel uh, comfortable. I never thought I could do my fist stuff over Zoom, um, but it's um, it's not just dropping fifth your step five and then going to on to other steps. Um, I just stick with the same person that I work the steps with because they understand the process that I am going through. I couldn't help but jump in there and help uh, James out with that question. So with that, I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Um, Layla is next. Hi, everyone. I am um, new to all this. I've never been to a program, but I did the steps on my own um, through my own spiritual awakening. Um, thank you, James, and everyone for sharing. Um, I wanted to speak upon the um, codependency, realizing that I was codependent and through narcissistic control, um, which was a lot of the questions in the chat. And what happened was I opened my heart, how James said, to opening your heart to helping yourself. And after realizing that I was also wrong in many manners and that, that it wasn't just the narcissist and researching emotional abuse and realizing that it's codependents that are attached to narcissists and having to sit with the fact that I was also wrong and I also had my own flaws and um, to not look externally at what everybody else is doing, but internally within my own heart and realizing that I can be better through my own control of my own life. And um, I just want to thank everyone for sharing. Um, this is all new to me, um, but thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Layla. Um, I don't see any more raised hands. Uh, oh, somebody, uh, there was someone who chatted, said that they wanted to talk. Uh, uh, the name began with an A. So if you're still wanting to talk, um, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I buried your chat thing here. I'm terrible at uh, chat. Uh, it's okay here. Uh, this is Austin, codependent. Um, Austin. Hey, I just had a question for you, James. Um, I know you talked about shame a lot in, <laughs> in terms of step four and step five. Um, that's definitely something I struggle with in terms of what's brought me to CODA. And um, I, I suppose my question really is just, I know you said that the, the shame kind of, uh, you know, started, started to go away the more and more you shared little by little, but how, how did you deal with those feelings of shame as you were going to the program? Um, Austin, this is James. I, um, it wasn't because I was sharing that the shame went on. That did help. But it was because God was removing my character defects. As my higher power transformed me, that's what removed the shame. And so I'll just pass that on to you. It's a process between me and my higher power. And because my higher power loves me and you too, as a matter of fact, Mr. Austin, then, um, and if you need a higher power, you can always have mine. But um, now it, it wasn't, you know, sharing helps a lot. It really does. But that's a physical help. That's not a spiritual help. It takes a spiritual level of relationship, letting go to a higher power for me in order to uh, have that shame actually removed. Thank you for the question. Thank you. I have MES. Um, hi there, uh, James. This is, um, I heard two things that really had made me stop what I was doing and write down a note. Um, the first thing you said was, how do you describe dawn to someone who's never seen what? The sky or the light or the dawn. what was that you said? The rising sun. Okay. And then um, later on, I think it was around seven, step seven. As my higher power cleans me out, I become more sensitive to what? To, hmm. to when I do things wrong or? You know, Miss Emily, that's a funny question in a way. I don't think you, I, I, I and just, um, but let me put it this way. My, my sensitivity prior to the, the, recur the little bit of recovery I've had, I'm grateful about, was uh, I, I um, confused kind of irrational sensitivity having to do with caretaking and all the kinds of other uh, stuff. Sensitivity now for me, um, as, as, 
genuineness can be calm is just to your pain. And it's just, I, I, I'm, I, I, I understand your pain. I feel it. And I'm, I will do whatever I can to help you, uh, help God remove it. That help any, Emily? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again for your talk and jumping sure. around the rooms. <laughs> My pleasure. I have Ashley K. Hi, um, my name is Ashley. I am a codependent. Um, I, I didn't have so much a question, just um, something that I was reflecting on that I wanted to share. Um, I really feel like the steps for me have been a great way to see my own growth. Um, when I first came to CODA, I had just gotten out of a really terrible relationship, was going through a divorce, and just step one in my first meeting, admitting that I was powerless over others. Um, I think the thing that I struggled most with when I first started was control patterns. And to me, that first step admitting that was terrifying. Um, and I've been in CODA a little over a year now. And to look at that now and read that, I am relieved. <laughs> I am relieved to accept that I have no power over anyone else because I cannot imagine trying to take that on foolishly. Um, so thank you for your talk. And uh, thanks for letting me share. That, Miss Ashley, thank you so much. I feel the same way. Okay, I don't see any more raised hands. Oh, here's somebody, Krista. Hi, I'm Krista, codependent. Um, and I don't actually have a question necessarily, but I did just want to share that I really appreciated even just the sentence that, you know, I have to live the steps. Um, it's kind of like mentioned everywhere, you know, that that um, our higher power is going to let us know what we want. And I always think to myself, you know, what do you want from me, higher power? And the answer is so simple of living the steps. I always think it's so much more detailed and specific than that. And, and I, I don't know, just hearing you say it, um, James just really kind of, I don't know, clicked the light bulb for me today. So I wanted to share that gratitude in the spirit of the meeting <laughs> of gratitude um, with you for saying that. Um, because, you know, now that I know the steps a little bit more and been working them, I really do just kind of start with step 11, a meditation and kind of go from there, I guess, step three and then on. <laughs> so, yeah, I really just want to say thank you because, um, yeah, living the steps seems so simple and like I just really should be laughing at myself. But yeah, thanks again. Thank you, Ms. Crystal. I have um, uh, down in the chat, Dan R. wants to share. Yes, thanks for, for permitting me to share. I, I don't have the more options. Um, one thing that I've experienced at some point in my recovery in, in uh, improving my relationship with my higher power, whoever that higher power is, is I noticed I began letting go of my own character defects and accepting them. This is me. I'm a perfectionist. I'm a, a control freak or whatever defect it was. And I have a whole bunch. Um, and as I let go of the me, of my ego, of, of everything that is in my head, slowly God replaced the void that it left by letting all that go. And he began to speak to me, and I began to hear to began to hear him speaking to me. And slowly, step by step, no pun intended, higher power just kind of took over. And since then, it's it's a miracle, uh, just by letting go of of the me, who I am, and the result by having higher power uh, play his his. Uh, do his job on me was I discovered my authentic self and I love myself for that. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Uh, Julie B. Um, thank you, Florence. This is Julie B. So codependent. I want to say my elevator is broke. I need to use the steps. And what that means to me is I had a childhood higher power that was fear-based, shame, punishing, and mean. And so I joined CODA with that same higher power. So CODA taught me to fire the higher power of my childhood and write a one ad for a new higher power, which is based on love and light and wisdom. So you know, it takes a lot to do that. And, you know, my elevator is broke. I do, my elevator needs maintenance. So 
I worked at step 10 uh, most days. And I just wanted to say that for the newcomers here, you bring me so much hope and love. And I'm just grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Healy. Uh, David C., we have two minutes left now for real. <laughs> Hi, okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, David C., uh, Recovering Codependent. Um, Hi, yeah, actually, uh, I, it's more of a question um, to the floor, to the room. But um, how do you find a balance? Um, so, so having worked the steps, um, how do you find a balance between um, still trying to have a relationship, for example, with family members who are still in the midst of their own diseases, right? And, um, and still work your program and, and still trying to be loving, tolerant and, and not let resentment or fear kind of get the best of, best of oneself. <laughs> Anybody want to answer that question, David? I mean, that's a person, you know, how, you mean, you know, how do I, I mean, I, I know yeah. it's, <laughs> I mean, after a while and enough recovery, it's not hard to figure that one out. But mm. at this point, I don't know if I'd be able to tell you, I'm just throwing in my two cents. I, I see some offers in the chat downstairs. Uh, if you want, if you can do the chat. And I, I, I missed your whole question, or I would attempt to answer you. Attempt to answer. Oh, yeah. oh here we have Layla here. Yeah, um, I, I, I deal with this too, where my family members are also codependent, um, and it's not my place to diagnose them or anything like that. But they have similar traits to me, and I can relate. And I have this urgency to want to help them and want them to be better because I see the light. And sometimes you have to let that go because it enables them and it doesn't let them fall on their face on their own. And once I realized that I cannot help everybody and I have to help myself before I can help them and I have to show them through my actions that I am wise and I, I have done the work and I see the light, then they will follow through this modeling behavior, but we can't force anybody to see it just like we didn't see our toxic traits until we had to fall on our face. And it's the sad truth because you don't want to leave anybody behind. Um, but they will get there when they're ready, just like we got there when we were ready. Um, but the best thing to do is be in open arms and welcome them when they are ready. And um, that's the only way. Um, otherwise, if they're toxic to you, if they're you know mean to you, or if they're in any way, you have to put your boundaries down. Um, and that is only practice for you to understand um, dealing with difficult people, because we can only get better. We can only get more clear on how we speak and being impeccable with our words um, and being kind. So, yeah, that I definitely relate to that in uh, wanting to or seeing our family members also dealing with those same problems. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Layla. And we're actually we're thank actually you. past time. Um, but I do said that Sandy still had her hand raised, so I'd like to give her a chance, like to go, Sandy. Up. Okay, I just wanted to, hi, Sandy. I just wanted to say uh, briefly. I'll make it quick. That for me, the steps helped me to see, especially step four, how I was controlling other people, not letting my higher power in control, and through my controlling of other people. And feeling that and making myself my own higher power, my life was a train wreck. And when I finally let a higher power in and started accepting the steps and working the steps, my life is great today. I mean, I didn't have friends today. I have friends. I have relate. I know I relate with people in a way I never thought I could. And so I just want to say, for me, letting go of control and working the steps really was a big help for my life to be the way it is today. Thank you for letting me share. 